The Nordic region, which finds itself among the most prosperous and least corrupt in the world, is home to our next country. Located in the Feniscandia Peninsula, no, it does not look like a and surrounded by the Baltic Sea in the east, and the Scandinavian mountains in the west, Sweden is living proof that there are no physical barriers to being one of the most developed countries in the world. Are you ready for round two? Sverige, or officially known in English as Kingdom of Sweden, is a country in Northern Europe that shares a border with two nations and has a maritime boundary looking like this, with this little chunk under a joint jurisdiction with Norway. Its size makes it the fifth largest country in Europe. To give you an idea, here is how Sweden compares to the other top four. The Swedish origins go way back to around the year 500 BC, right when the population in the region became settled and agriculture became an integral part of their lives. However, contact with the outside world wasn't prominent until the 800s, when the Vikings emerged and started their voyages of colonization, raiding and trading. It is unknown when the Swedish merged together as one entity, but there is record of it being a firmly Christian nation in the 1060s, leaving behind all trace of Viking culture. Sweden's borders changed throughout the centuries, and the country was self-ruled until 1389, when it formed a union along with Norway under the rule of Denmark, called the Kalmar Union. It regained full independence after they rebelled in 1523, speaking of which, around this time, the first records of a Swedish flag were discovered, which looked like this. The following centuries were marked with war and expansion. These were the golden years of the Swedish Empire. Eventually, they lost some wars and their territory shrank. A new union was created until 1906. From this point on, the borders and Sweden's flag are intact and remain the same even now. But what does the beautiful landscape of Sweden look like today? Sweden's elevation ranges from 2,100 meters above sea level to two meters below sea level. The nearby mountains allow rivers to form, draining through much of the territory and forming lakes, the latter making up for around 9% of the country's landmass. Most of Sweden is heavily forested too, with woodland areas taking up 62% of the total area, leaving only 7% as agricultural land. This is actually one of the reasons why the late 1600s Swedish Empire lacked the resources to maintain its position as a great power in the long run. Climate-wise, Sweden can be divided into three regions. The first region has a tundra climate, where zero degrees Celsius is the warmest it can get on average. As you can imagine, winters here are severe. Then, we have the subarctic region, with the coldest month dropping to an average of zero degrees Celsius. Finally, southern Sweden, where the winters are short and rather cold. Summer temperatures on average reach up to 23 degrees Celsius. This is where most people live, meaning southern Sweden accounts for 90% of the population, the general population being around 10 million. Most citizens of the country reside in the capital city of Stockholm, a city whose capacity has almost reached 2.5 million people. There are 20 other counties, presenting numbers of 1.7 million over here, 1.4 million around here, and less than half a million over there. Furthermore, Sweden does not collect statistical data on ethnic background. The reasons behind this are unclear. There are no official statements as to why, but it is believed that this is related to fighting racism. During the 1900s, Sweden used to carry out sterilizations based on racial grounds without a valid consent of the subject. There was even a state institute of racial biology, which endorsed this approach under the guide of scientific research. It eventually changed to the study of genetics rather than focusing on any kind of racial aspect, and Sweden quickly moved away from its dark past. Nowadays, people acknowledge these wrongdoings, actively fighting for integration and respect for people of all backgrounds. If you are born in Sweden, then all that matters is that you are Swedish. Data that is available shows that 26% of the population is a foreign background, including foreign-born and Swedish-born with two foreign-born parents. On the other hand, Swedish citizens living outside of Sweden equals to around 700,000 people worldwide. Religion is another type of data that the state does not collect. Sweden is, however, a highly secular nation, and Swedes appear to see little connection between religiosity and happiness. The country is one of the least religious countries in the world, along with China, Japan, and Estonia. Less than one in five Swedes claim to be religious, compared with, for example, more than half of the Americans. A recent survey, although not official, 
estimated that 75% of Swedish residents had a Christian affiliation, most of them belonging to the evangelical Lutheran faith. But then again, most of the people are not religious. Around 2% are Muslim, and about 23% have no religion at all. Now, it's time to address the macroeconomic side of the country. On the one hand, there's exports. No, not that kind of exports. The total amount in 2018 came to 162 billion US dollars. Machines make up about 25% of exports. Transportation-related trade, consisting of 16%, and chemical products accounting for 10% of all exports. Now, if we take a look at this map, every little coin represents 1 billion US dollars in trade. And we see 17 coins going into Germany, the largest trading partner, representing 10% of all exports, followed by Norway with 15 coins, Denmark with 11 coins, and the United States with 10 coins. This particular trading partnership is done through the European Union. This is largely due to the fact that the European Union acts as one unit to keep the best interests of its members in mind. On the other hand, we've got imports. And yes, this is forgetting the tons of waste that Sweden imports in order to recycle. The total amount in 2018 was a huge 160 billion US dollars. The top two percentages that make up Sweden's imports are in the same top fields as exports, 25% and 13%. But the third consists of mineral products, crude petroleum and refined petroleum. In this map, Germany again accounts for much of the trade in the country, accounting for 19% of the trade, around 30 coins, followed by the Netherlands with 15 coins, Denmark with 11 and China with 8. All this trade is born in the Gothenburg port, which flows directly into the North Sea and allows for open transportation into the Atlantic Ocean. There is one canal intended as a commercial route, and another for recreational purposes. These two connect the Baltic Sea with the North Sea without having to go through pesky little Denmark. Like most of Scandinavia, Sweden is an extremely bike-friendly country, with a well-developed network of cycle paths in and around its towns and cities, not to mention an extensive road network that connects all territory in and around Sweden. And yes, they do have railways. This network connects to Denmark and the rest of mainland Europe through a bridge and tunnel and allows for a railway trip of six hours from Stockholm to Copenhagen, greatly reduced to a speedy one hour if you travel by plane. This leads us to talk about Stockholm and the air routes. Sweden reaches far destinations such as Thailand, Japan, India and China, as well as countries in Africa like Ethiopia or Morocco and cities like Miami in the US. It is also well connected inside of Europe, having its busiest routes in the northern regions, including London, Copenhagen, Oslo, Helsinki, and the city of Lulea. Why is Lulea a busy route? Sweden's northern region is close to the Arctic Circle, giving residents and tourists alike the chance to escape to the home of one of Europe's last true quiet places, full of wild animals and untouched nature. You can even get to see the Aurora Borealis, if lucky, commonly referred to as the Northern Lights. We are entering into our final chapter, friendship and rivalry. Denmark and Sweden have a rivalry that goes way back, even before recorded history. Both countries would always find the time to do a spot of invading before tea, even if both were preoccupied with Central European wars. Denmark was by far the strongest regional power early on, and were fully capable of forcing the other Nordics into submission. Sweden was bigger, and it had natural resources, so when foreign nations started fueling the Swedish economy as well, the tide slowly turned. The point came where both countries were an equal match, and no one country was powerful enough to completely rule over the other. There have been countless wars and peace treaties between the two, to the extent that this age-long feud between the Swedes and the Danes was contested by only one other competitive battling duo, England and Scotland. These hostilities have since subsided, and now they treat each other like buddies. War has been traded in for roasts via Twitter accounts. And yes, they are official government accounts, with memes and all. This intense rivalry has transformed into a competitive friendship, but the nation holding the true title of best friend to Sweden is Finland. Sweden and its citizens were willing to risk their lives defending another country. This became a reality in the winter war between Finland and the Soviet Union. Swedish volunteers were on the front lines, side by side with the Finnish soldiers, at the time when they were needed most. Finland and Sweden were once part of the same nation, and neither one ever forgot this fact, continuing to support one another. I think this says a lot about the people. The people, 
of Sweden.